Today we're going to talk about how I make espresso while traveling. But before we do that, I just want to say welcome to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose the coffee gear you want to brew with at home. You'll find a lot of reviews and comparisons and suggestions on this channel, and it would really help me out if you would please like and subscribe. That helps me continue to produce more content uh, for those of you who are watching. Um, also, if you could please use the affiliate links below, I'll make a slight amount of commission at no extra charge to you. That helps fund reviews and um, ideas just like this one that you're seeing today. Lastly, I have an Instagram account called Kabeen's Coffee Corner. You're more than welcome to follow me there. You can find the links for all this stuff in the description below. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So I just got off a week of camp and I want to go ahead and review some of the things that I like to bring um, while traveling for an extended period of time or any time for that matter. Um, I want to start off with saying the one thing that you will need to make this work is availability to an outlet. If you don't have an outlet, you'll need something like a jet boil or some way to boil water in order to make this work. Everything else will work without an outlet. Um, I will put some suggestions on some other things um, to buy that aren't necessarily as expensive as the things that I'm showing you today, so that um, that's an option. Um, so the first thing I have is just a simple um, cloth to dry things through. This is a Cafe Let microfiber cloth that works great. Wrapped inside of that, I have a one espresso cup. Um, this is uh, the one of Fellow Joey. Um, it's nice and insulated. It seems a little bit more durable, not as fragile as glass. There's a lot of other options as well. I've used a Stanley shot glass, which is metal, um, but I prefer being able to hold this um, instead of that. So this is why I went with this one. Um, House and all of this is just a simple shaving kit um, that came with some luggage, but I'll link some ones that are similar to it. I have a couple of random keychains on here from a milk pitcher to a porta filter that have gotten a little beat up, but that shows that this is only held for coffee. Um, when it comes to heating up water, this is the best way that I find to do it in a small portion while traveling. This is a pitcher for steaming milk. Um, you can use any pitcher for this, um, and you simply just fill up water. For pour overs, I have a piece of tape on here to kind of give an indication of how much water it fills up. And this is an immersion heater. So this is what you will basically find in all kettles to kind of heat up um, the kettle, but you don't really see it because it's on the inside underneath of some stuff. Um, so this basically heats water, and what you simply do is you put this in your steaming pitcher. There's a little clip here that goes on the side and you put it in your steaming pitcher, fill it up with water past these little coils, it sits there, you plug it in and it will boil the water after a few minutes. Um, this is one of the easiest, smallest ways to do things for, and it also gives you some hot water too as well. Um, if you can find a different way to heat up water um, outside of using one of these pitchers, you can do the, that as well. Um, you can use it in a hotel room um, with a cup of uh, like a styrofoam cup of water, but it works a lot better to have a pitcher in my opinion. So if you're wanting to save a little bit of space, that's one way to do it. Um, in this, I can also put a scale, but I put it somewhere else, so I'm gonna uh, bear with that. Um, this is what I use to make espresso. This is the Pico Presso. Um, the Pico Presso is a $130 machine here. That immersion heater is like 10 bucks, by the way. Um, this is also like 10 bucks, the pitcher is like five bucks, so this is not that expensive. Um, this is the Pico Pet Presso, and this pulls a shot of espresso um, very, very well for $130. Um, this, uh, I'm always amazed at how sh uh, well this is uh, at making espresso. So you got a funnel and a tamper in here. Um, you could put um, a WD tool or Weiss distribution technique tool in there, which is basically a bobby pin or a um, a tool that it comes with, but I don't find that I need it for this setup because of the specific feature that's in this grinder. If I use a different grinder, then I would also include that in there. And it's got the porta filter basket, and you simply fill that up with water, and you're good to go on that. Um, I will have some more videos about the Pico Presto coming up soon on how to use it and my review of it. But spoiler alert: this is a phenomenal machine, and it comes with a nice little case. So I just throw it in this case. Um, and throw it in the bag. And then I can fit a little scale in here as well in that espresso cup and easily, easily Ziploc this shut. Or you could switch it up and put your coffee in there as well. You can store coffee in a bag or I use this little catch cup from a Breville um, and it works pretty well here. But honestly, a bag might be a little easier because you can make it a little smaller in your luggage. Uh, for my drinking vessel, if I'm not doing a straight shot of espresso and I'm doing a latte or an Americano, if you're in a hotel room or in a condo or something like that and you want to make an 
iced latte. Uh, this is the cup that I usually do with this, which is the fellow Carter Move mug. Um, I keep going back to this mug. It still has its flaws, but this is just a great little vessel um, to hold um, whatever drink you want to, and it has a nice ceramic coating on the inside. So I'll use that for Americanos, iced Americanos, and iced lattes while I'm traveling with my shot of espresso. Um, this is the 1Z Presso K Max coffee grinder. I want to make sure I get this right. This coffee grinder is about a $260 coffee grinder, and um, this comes in a nice hard shell case um, like so, so that makes it pretty easy to do um, coffee with. Um, inside, you'll find um, the coffee grinder itself, um, the handle uh, that simply goes on just like this, uh, and you'll find a cleaning brush. Um, so to clean off grounds, I find that really useful. If I don't have the onesie presso with me, I simply take this small little cleaning brush that you can buy from Fellow. It comes with a Fellow Oat. It's like $5 and I'll throw this in there to brush off any grounds that I need to um, and clean my grinder if I need to. Uh, inside for the scale, I have it stored in this little tiny pouch up top here. This is the Akaya Cinco scale. This is a very expensive scale and I don't necessarily recommend it for traveling um, in all purposes, but it makes a great travel scale. It's just very expensive. This has been switched over to the Akaya Pixis scale, um, which is about the, which is the same price. It just comes with a black, it comes in black and it comes with a plastic case rather than a metal. But this is um, one of Akaya's most expensive scale known for being some of the best precision scales on the market for coffee. It comes and it looks like this and it fits in the palm of your hand um, and it works great for traveling, especially with the hard shell case. Um, because I don't want the hard shell case to get scratched, um, I sewed a little case to go over it, a little sleeve to go over it as well. But in this purpose, I just simply stored it in the sleeve here and it worked out well. Um, I will link in the description a scale that is not $250. That would also work well for traveling. One of the things I like about this is I can put whatever I want on that scale because I can see um, how it's registering in the amount of grams on it based off of my phone if I need to. So if I cover up the screen, it is all right. Um, this is the 1Z Presso uh, K Plus, K Max, sorry. Um, the actual coffee grinder will be in the link description. There's just a lot of them out here. I bought this used not that long ago, and I want to go over one of the features that I think makes this the perfect, one of the best coffee grinders for traveling. Um, the first one is it does come with a case. It's a little chunky of a case, but most grinders don't come with a case, so that's a huge plus. I think some of uh, 1Z Presso's coffee grinders come in different cases, but this is the main one here, is it has this little drop through catch cup. So this magnet's on the top of it here, and you pull this up and it allows the grounds to go through, and you have this little piece here. The reason why I find that is you can shake up your grinder and that will um, distribute your grounds a little bit more evening, evening evenly without the use of a distribution tool or a w, uh, Weiss distribution tool technique, um, with, which is the little needle thing that I mentioned earlier. So this prevents me from having to bring one of those because I simply put this on the porta filter, shake it around a little bit, and then just pull that up and usually I get a pretty even flow of grounds in there. Um, and it works out great that well. If you don't like that method, you can switch it with this one here, which simply screws on the bottom and replaces it so you don't have to worry about that coming out. Because you do have to be careful if you do accidentally push up with your finger, um, your grounds will fall everywhere um, in the place you're staying, which did happen to me on that. Um, but this has been a great grinder so far. There's a review and a comparison coming on this later. Um, I will link a couple of options that I think, um, that I have personally tried uh, that go well with the Pico Presser. I've never used them with the Pico Presser, but I've used them um, years ago, um, like the Air Grind, which is a $150 grinder. So um, a little less than half the price, or about half the price of the 1Z Presso. Um, so that would be an option there as well for you, um, but it wouldn't come in this case. Uh, for my, my grinder that I personally own, this one's going out to a family member soon um, that I'm doing a review and some work on uh, before that gets sent out. But this um, is my normal go-to travel grinder um, for the purpose that this is one of the best quality tasting grinders that you can get. Like not the grinder tastes well, but the coffee that it produces is one of the best ones out there. And that is the Commandante C40. Um, this is the Mark III version. 
Um, the Mark IV version is now up for sale. This one comes in about $325, give or take the colorway that you get. But I added the red click mod to it, which gives me a little bit more adjustability. And that brings the total to $375. So this is not a cheap grinder. This is, like I said, the Mark III. So they made two changes on it. One being it allows beans to flow in a little bit better. So these are more at a slant so your beans don't get stuck. And two, they made this catch cup change into a uh, plastic catch cup um, as well. So you have a glass one and a plastic one. Um, one of the things that I most recently saw that could be good for traveling purposes with this um, is the fact that I've seen people use their grinder, uh, grind their beans for it and pour it in their porta filter for espresso. And then they'll rinse out this cup, this catch cup, and they will actually use this as their drinking vessel, which I think is a great idea because that saves you from carrying one thing like this too as well. Um, just make sure you clean it well before and after so you don't get grounds um, in your coffee or coffee in your grounds uh, for future times you use it. Um, in this, I have it stored in this little sleeve and this is the Daykine pencil sleeve, um, pencil case. It's not a hard shell case, but I'm not super, like I don't throw my stuff around crazy. So what I'll do is I'll take this grinder and in some instances, if I'm not putting a cup in there, what I'll do is I'll just wrap this cleaning cloth around the grinder um, and that will protect it a little bit from um, anything that could happen to it. Uh, they also make some sleeves for this grinder as well that you could buy for 25 bucks in various places. And I'll set the handle simply on top of that. So then it's got a case from getting scratched and it's got a case from getting um, a little bit more beat up. I believe Onesie Presto also sells a case um, that you can buy and it actually fits the Commandant. So that is a potential option as well. And this is a great example as it's very difficult to get in right now. Um, but see, it fits perfectly well in this and that basically allows you to fit all of this and that's your coffee setup to make great espresso wherever you're at in a very small compact. You could probably um, jam a bag of grounds depending on how long you're staying in here um, as well. I also have these things called soda bottle preforms. I don't have them with me. They're in a different room and I forgot about them for this video. But a soda bottle preform, it's basically before a soda gets kind of blown out in the shape of a bottle, it comes in a hard plastic tube that they simply add heat and blow it up to the shape that they need it to be. Um, so this makes a solid tube with a soda bottle cap on the top of it. And that's what sometimes I use to store um, coffee grounds in um, that you could basically not bring a grinder and bring a couple of those tubes with pre-toast weight of coffee grounds and you can kind of guess on your output and wouldn't have to need to bring a scale so that would cut that down a little bit you can also put whole bean in there too so you can kind of store what you want that way and then you can just grab and go and it's less weighing and less work to do if you want to prevent bringing a scale with you you can pre-weigh beforehand that well um, so in my week experience this was my first time actually traveling with this setup and as long as you have a little bit of time in the morning to make coffee you should be good to go and this was a great enjoyment on here i'm not a particularly a pour over type of a person i do enjoy them occasionally but on the day in and day out i almost exclusively drink shots of espresso and this setup basically got me that without sacrificing a lot of quality and I could really really enjoy it when I was away from my expensive machine and my expensive grinders even though this isn't necessarily a cheap setup but this is a setup that I will use for here on out for a long time. Um, I used to travel with a flare. Um, it was a little bit bigger. Um, it came quite a bit a big of a case. Uh, so I kind of switched to doing pour overs and with a Pico Presso in this setup, I really got to go back there and that was a great enjoyment to me. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Like I said, I'll link all this stuff in the description below as long as, as well as some cheaper options too, to kind of help this be a little bit more budget friendly for those of you who might not want to spend this much on a travel setup. But thank you so much for watching. And again, please like and subscribe.